So welcome to the first episode of Jace and Co, a web-based podcast talking to other coaches within the industry, getting an insight of them. No one better than I'd rather have than Martin Winston, you know, the first guest. So here's Martin, going to hand you over to him and he's going to give you a brief insight about himself. Hey, bro. Yes. Uh, so for, you, for those who don't know, I'm Martin Winston, part of the Condition Coaches. We are a prep slash lifestyle team we have myself my wife amanda uh, coach matt mccullough i've been pro and new coach pca pro alex lord um we are in the process of just really developing the brand you know it's been a, a good couple of years for us and i think the the condition coach name slash brand is getting more re- like recognized worldwide i think which is waves as well in the uk overseas <laughs> america yeah, yeah. It, it's been it's been very very good and it's very humbling to to sort of be a part of this sort of notion moving forward you know it's exciting we've been talking for a long time mate and i remember when i remember martin before he was full-time coaching and then now to <laughs> yeah. see where he's gone in the last few years is absolutely testament to your hard work yeah no i appreciate it man it, uh, i remember having the conversation with you you know you're just sort of saying like what should I do? Where should I take it? And now, like, we get to travel the world, mate, doing what we love to do uh, on a very regular basis. And we spend a lot of time in in nice restaurants eating food. Um, just can't be bad. It's good. No, it's good. So you're freezing a bit on my screen, but we'll continue. I think that's just how the, the platform's working. So what I wanted to sort of say is, like, I wanted to ask you where it all began. And I don't mean, like, for you in terms of, oh, I walked into the gym at 12 or, like, where did it all begin in terms of you moving into sort of condition coaching, solidifying it rather than just having it as a slogan you used to just throw around loosely? Yeah, so so for me, like, you know, the, the traits of, being a competitor, I was I was a competitor first. Um, after a few shows, you you know what it's like. You get a few few guys out of the gym. I'll oh, make. Can you set me up a diet? Can you write me a training plan? Yeah. You know, and I did in my goodwill. You know, never used to charge anything and <laughs> just help people out because I enjoyed doing it. And then it got to a was point competing, where you was competing with Nava. Yeah, so I started with in my my local my local show, <laughs> and then went to Naba Naba British, then UK BFS as a classic, um, and then more, most recently, obviously stepped across to to two bros and last competed in twenty two, yeah, beginning of twenty two. I think we um, both twenty two. That was the last year. Yeah, yeah, when we both retired, yeah. um, <laughs> and and it was it was. One of those things, I just found that I really enjoyed it, helping people out, had a few lifestyle clients, had a few guys that were competing as well. Um, at the time, I was uh, a, a manager, I was an engineer manager, ran a team of engineers looking after a big hospital here in the southwest. And um, that was my day to day, you know, I was working a nine to five, I worked overtime, I worked a shift pattern, I worked on call cool systems. And that was my working week and everything I'd done in the background was to do with coaching I was either in the gym training or doing yeah. my coaching stuff and then it was just a hobby then wasn't it you was helping yeah it, it was literally just being a hobby just helping out charging peanuts you know and then yeah, it's crazy because there's that saying like chase your passion and turn it into your hustle and le- legit that's legit what you did but you didn't right. aim to do so obviously you had to charge because it was no like- no because I was in a position where we've probably all been that imposter syndrome you know I, I was do you know what it's I, funny because I've got a question on here and it's and I'm going to ask it because I'm a close friend of yours. The question actually was, I'm going to skip to is imposter syndrome. And do you still suffer from it now? Because I feel you do. Yes, 100%. 100%. Um, initially. Why? why with the accolades, the achievements, the placings, the pro cards? What? Or I don't know. I think maybe because it's happened so quickly. Okay. You know, I think the the escalation of where I was. And mate, we're only talking like three and a half, four years ago. Yeah, three, three, four years ago, yeah. You know, like you've been doing this a long time guys that we we sort of hang around with in our coaching circles they've been doing it 10 years plus you know i've i've done it in the background but it's not been my full-time job for 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 that period and at the time when i was getting into that the the realms of thinking should i do this everyone was telling me how to do it and i'm like no i can't remember we had that, a phone call and i said yes we did we did mate and it <sighs> Mate, I was, I was working for the NHS, I had good benefits, good pay, 
you know i had the, the standard nine to five you know and it was just thought you know i'm just gonna go get by and just live my life like this because i didn't know anything else I was, i've always worked for the nhs you've got a good kitchen set up yeah, you know, everything was there. And I was like, you know, what? I just had this little side hustle that I enjoyed as a, a little bit of a hobby. And I had guys that, like, Paul Scarborough, for instance, he was my yeah. first coach. I worked with him for a long period of time. He's an OG in the bodybuilding world. Yeah. For, the, for, those guys, the, for those of you who not know who Paul Scarborough is, go look him up. Um, his social media doesn't do him justice because the time of when he was bodybuilding, there was no social media. I think anyone <laughs> under 26 of probably not going yeah. to know unless they're deep rooted in exactly in seen or from sort of the midlands area yeah and like, i always found myself in a position where like i can't do what he does you know he's he's respected in this industry nobody knows who i am <laughs> you know and i think just earning your stripes a little bit just doing doing it at your own pace not trying to jump into it balls deep i just did my thing did a little bit in the background started to get results and i was still working my full-time job you know yeah. I guess um, the, the best marketing team is your results, isn't it? And I think that's yeah. what escalated you so quickly as well. Yeah, because at that time, I, like, I, I've, I've still got not, not the greatest social media following. And at that time, I had a very poor social media following. And it, it was, and I've always based myself off of results in regards to how I can advertise myself. And I think that worked really well. And then a good friend of mine, Lewis Breed, um he was he was in a position where he was he was going in for a show and he's like mate do you do like do you want to take over do you want to great testament that he had that trust with you and in, in, in due respect at that time lewis was working yeah. with more experienced coaches and yeah. this is what i always say i said it to a client but today it's not about who you work with it's about who gives you time that's it mate that and is he, very much it as a coach me and yourself with abundance of clients we can only give so much time but it's about when it's your day it, it it's your time and, and how much time you can give that client. And I think Lewis saw that from you that he could get that time. Yeah. 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 And look where we are now, you know, he's been able to transform himself from that, where he was at that athlete, when he was pro card, he's now placing top, top three. three in American shows, you know, in pro shows. So and that's just his stepping stone. You know, I, I think he's got the tools to get to the O at the right show. 100%. 100%. It's exciting to see as well. So no, that's cool. I'm actually got a question. What, who was the first client you ever put on stage? Because I was thinking this the other day myself. I think, I think it was um, a guy called Grant, um, Wes Grant. Uh, I think he's called Big Granty on social media now. He may have changed his name. I was like, who was the first person? And then I realised it wasn't. I was like, they don't even bodybuild no more. That shows how long you've been doing it. Yeah, you know, um, Julian was a good yeah. Julian. He was. Shows. I think he yeah. also put your name out there as well because he did a lot of shows. And, and yeah, well, I think we've done like six or seven shows in one season in like twenty nineteen. I think PCA body power and stuff like that. And yeah. that sort of where I was like, man, like this guy's putting out some good physiques and good results. Yeah. Because I think he did the novice class in most of them shows as well, and he was just like the best novice in the country at the time. Yeah, and it's yeah, mad yeah. how it goes because I don't think you work with him now, but it's mad the way it goes. Like when you look back, like sometimes Tom will show me a picture, but like this person looks sick now. Like, oh, I worked with him six years ago. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, yeah. like a stepping stone to their journey. Like, it we've, is, we've got is. a few clients where they work with you or they work with me, and it's, it's always nice to see sort of who they've come from and where they've come from as well. Yeah, and the thing is, though, me and you, mate, we, we celebrate each other's victories time oh, and time again, yeah. you know. And I love that. And it's part of the coaching business. It's, it's something that if you're not in that position, that you can't share your, I guess, mm. your yeah. wins, the enjoyment that you get out of it, you, you're not going to get the full fulfillment out of coaching. Oh, 100%. You need to be able to be happy for others, you know, and that that, that shows you're a pure person and then good's going to come to you anyway. So, yeah. no, that's, that's quite interesting. Well, how would you sort of say you view the industry – from a coaching perspective now compared to when you first walked in? <laughs> um, less daunting, put it that way. But, 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 as we always hear it. We hear it's saturated, you know. But is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? You, uh, can, you can play it one way or the other, I think. Yeah, I think it's a positive. I think it's a positive because I always yeah. see it as a positive because I'm like, well, it's here to stay. Do you know what I mean? Because when we got this online coaching job, at the start, it's like 
is, is this here for 10 years? And it's here for 10 or 20 now because it's saturated. Easy, easy. And this is the majority of conversations I was having pe- like with people who weren't in the industry. What happens if it doesn't work? You know, but I, the way that the, the fitness industry has elevated over the last five years, my mum has, my mum has like if I go home there's a shake a cup in my mouth. She's never been to the gym, but she's got fitness. Do you know what I mean? It's just everywhere. It's, 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 yes. it's everywhere. My mum's exactly the same. She'll follow a uh like a slimming world plan, you know, which isn't obviously not body, anywhere near bodybuilder, right? <laughs> but she's right. doing something related to looking after her health. Yeah, and it's, it's again it really was a wake up call for me because in 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 the lockdown when a lot of things hit recession and went back, the fitness mm. industry didn't because again it was even more important on people's yeah. mental. So that yeah. was sort of because obviously I started a bit earlier than you. That was sort of I was like, wow, this is here to stay, and you know this yeah. is going to be a 15, 20 year career and, and longer because as we get older, someone said to me, when are you going to stop coaching? I've got mates like Neil Cranwell. He just coaches yeah. an older demographic, so this. That's yeah, it. James Louis Wellen, he's 50 plus. So this is actually probably, you've got another 20 years in this industry. Exactly, mate. Exactly. And the thing is, the beauty of what we do, mate, because we were not working that nine to five and dreading going into work every day, you know, that's aging people when they do that. They're, they're waiting for the day that they can retire. I'm not looking forward to the day that I retire, mate. I want to carry on doing this as long as I can, you know. Yeah, as long as you can, even if it gets to a point where you've only got a small amount of clients or, or exactly. you're, you're putting back a bit. But it's like yeah. I said to someone the other day, they was like, why do you still go to shows you've been doing it so long? Don't I said, it's my enjoyment. I feel fulfilled seeing clients face to face. Everyone knows I lived in Dubai, I came back. It was turned from an office job to fulfillment. Do you know what I mean? Just being yeah. online. So, no, that's interesting. But yeah, how would you sort of say you view the industry and in terms of that i mean like the positives the negatives and in terms of like because i feel like the the way and the actual space of coaching has changed because loom check-ins weren't a thing kahunas knowing your macros weren't a thing so when we look at that perspective what would you have sort of how would you view it now for me so like from a perspective of i remember back in the day where everybody was a closed book you know no one would tell you their secrets of how they were jacked in the gym, you know, what, what steroid cycle they were running or what diet they were doing. But now I think the openness of, of bodybuilding, especially with coaches, you know. I think like, I, I personally think trained by JP Fallen changed the game in, in, yes. in willingness, in openness. Yep. Um, there used to be like loads of blogs and stuff, but the, the openness and accessibility of trained by JP sort of made the talking of gear usage acceptable. Mm-hmm. 100% I agree I agree and I think that that then almost had a snowball effect with the rest of it to a certain everybody was then more open about how they trained or you know people have an opinion and of course everyone's going to have an opinion on something but like I feel that people can can talk about something more openly and then what you're going to do is then learn off someone else if they're thinking right well, why don't you try this or why don't you do that you know everybody I think wants to betray the best version of, of a coaching uh service but realistically it's going to be down to the clients that you coach at the end of the day it's it's, it's something that it's hard to what's the word i'm looking for it, it's i guess from a from a sort of perspective of what the kids are seeing on social media um i'm losing my drain here but it's, it's it's more about like i guess it, i think it's just more open for everybody like for me when i was back when i started you walk into the gym like proper timid you, you wouldn't have a clue who to talk to you wouldn't want to to speak to anybody but now i think that there is that application where you can do that and then what people are now seeing is that having a coach is more beneficial oh, to like, it's just you know it's you you can do your own that i can do my own that we know what to do but we still have someone yeah. every now and then to be accountable to yeah and um, so no i think the coaches you know everything's more open i think by trained by jp that was the only forum that made gear usage, gear dosage is accessible um, in a positive and a negative. Because I remember in 2020, no one was using GH. Now everyone's using GH as a, as a, as a mandatory staple. So yeah. again, that accessibility, not that it's wrong, but that accessibility works in two ways. It allows people to be like, you know what, this isn't as bad as people say. Because when I started, GH was demonized. You're going to get GH, got da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. 500 pound a pen. But when you realistically break it, if you get a generic kit, it's the same as a, a type of protein per month. So that yeah. accessibility led more people to using things, which ultimately led to better physiques. Yeah. And that probably led to better coaches. 
yeah 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 i think that, then that is 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 one of the things mate you're only as good i always say this you're only as good as your worst athlete <laughs> as as terrible as that sounds you know um you if you're able to to take an athlete and change their physique with the tools that you have and i think with that in what you said in regards to the the sort of openness of utilizing more tools now people are aware of that and you're able to change physiques oh crazy like well. i'll be the first to admit i've had some guys that say to me oh, i want to do this prep i say sweet and at the end of the prep i'm like wow i didn't i, I didn't really expect that <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah yeah and they're the ones that you like you're like shit this this is this is this is why i love doing it you know yeah yeah and, and sometimes i get the like, the average draw i want to lose 10 kilos and and sometimes you're like, sweet, you're all for it. But, you know, sometimes for the average Joe, 10 kilos is hard to lose. But then they go and lose 15. So yeah. it's sort of rewarding in that sense. How would you yeah. say? Go on. Go for it. Go for it. No, I was going to say, you're changing those people's lives by doing that, you know. And... Yeah. And I feel like people like you, I know I could list of four or five clients I know you've had for two, three years. And I feel like when you've changed someone's life or perspective, they're most likely just to stick with one coach. So don't get me wrong, there's, I've got, you know, everyone can change 10 coaches here if they want, but I've, I see it as when a client's been with me four or five years, I'm like, wow, we've got something good going on. Invested, mate, invested, yeah. Which is good. And sometimes it's just a comfort, comfortability factor as well. How would you sort of say coaching's changed? Because we never, like, my first <laughs> I didn't get looms. I didn't get macro yeah. sheets or, you know, I didn't really get that. I didn't get, maybe I did get two check-ins a week, but it was very different. Yeah, it, it was very, and I was fortunate with my first coach that he was local to me, so it was very much like come yeah, around my house. And then. It was local as well, so I was yeah, like, you know. It was sort of like... That's, that's what's instilled in me and you, because I still see people in person, and you still see people in person, granted, when you can. Yeah. And I think that came from what we saw coming up. Exactly, mate. I think that that's true, um, and there's so much value to that as well. Um, the, the old age of just dropping a... Even, like, mate, some of my diets were written out on a bit of paper <laughs> back and just and to people, you know, is local guys. And and obviously the way technology is going, the industry will grow with that to a certain degree. But as the conversation we had prior to this recording, mate, like technology isn't always the, the be and all be and all be all and end all, you know. Yeah. Bread, the bread and butter, mate. If you can give someone a diet on WhatsApp and give them a training plan, you know, it's yeah. gonna work. Just, you know, yeah. surrounded by apps and stuff and we were just talking about apps breaking down and stuff like that google sheets not calibrating when you update them i'm having that issue now you're yeah. having an issue with we won't say the app but an app <laughs> so again it, it's also being able to deliver something kind of as, as basic as it can because you know the goal is to get the person from a to b so obviously yeah. adding in everything we do loom sheets all these fantastic they're great but the fundamental is if martin can't get me from a to b i'm not going to hire him because i want to get to a to b and as mad as it sounds, people want to get there as quickly as possible. Yes. Patience is, is a thing that obviously we have to install in people. And that's very hard, uh, especially with like first timers and, and guys who who aren't seasoned competitors to a certain degree. I think that obviously the want now is to, to look like X, Y, and Z on social well, media. Instead. <laughs> yes, exactly, mate. I mean, like, no offense, I've seen more guys say they want to do classic than ever before, and you know you have to have them realistic conversations. Good things take yeah. time. Do you yeah, know? Yeah. What I mean? so, no, how, how do you how do you have those conversations? Like, you know, you have the conversations in regards to, oh, mate, look, I want to I want to sign up. I want to be a pro as quickly as possible, or like I want to do classic when realistically he's a men's physique boy. I just always say it's stepping stones. You know, win yeah. your first regional. Well, actually, not even win. Do your first show. Win your first regional. Yeah. Win your overall. Do stepping stones. But at the same time, you don't want to be seen as shooting down someone's dream. I do get it. But if yeah. you're not realistic and they don't hit the target, it falls on the coach. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And the thing is, though, the first thing that social media would do is look at the coach. And, yeah, and, and we've both we've both been there when something's not gone our way. Yeah. It's never what happened. Both parties, the coach is predominantly responsible, and I think that's why you bring a lot of your guys in on. And I'm very cautious of bringing a lot of my guys in on because all, all I can't <laughs> afford to fall short because every client's an opportunity to put them on stage at a great result. If we waste someone 16 weeks, it falls on us. Exactly, mate. And you shouldn't think about it like this, but. All eyes are on you, and it's an advertisement for your business. At the oh, end mate, of I get nervous. The first show of the year, I get nervous. Do you know why? Mate, I'm already getting that. <laughs> We're 10 weeks. When I'm like, got people going on week on week. Like, you got to think, I've not seen an inside out check in in probably about 
12 weeks now because we've been in the off season. Well, the last show was fun. Week, it's like my eyes retrain to the show condition. Right now, hey. like, are they going to be ready? Are they going to be ready? <laughs> it always comes together. We had this conversation. We're like, it's almost like, it, it's again, it's almost like, sort it's of like, like the you haven't rode your bike for six weeks. You get on it, yeah. and then within a few weeks, you're like, yeah, it's there. Yeah, my it's, all, it's all good. You're looking at physique and thinking, are they 10 weeks out? You know, yeah. I think that's the best sort of... Like, I've had I've sent pictures to you and been like, mate, do you think you'll be ready? And it's just that confirmation. But I do think, you know, some coaches are not asking them questions. And when you're not asking them questions, it's very easy to miss the mark. Oh, yeah, 100%. And if, like, you know yourself, you could be where you are and then think, oh, shit, I need to be ahead of the game. And then you're driving a client down too quickly. And again, it's not going to have any. Yeah, it's not really. It's I'm not really. at 16 weeks out, mate. I've got, what, one, two, I've got 16 guys on prep at the moment. Yeah, which is a nightmare. I was giving people bollockings before this. I said, you need to check in twice a week because it's getting yeah. into that sort of, that yeah. zone now. And it's just getting people back into them established habits. Yeah. You know, that's pretty interesting. So no, that's that's cool. We sort of seen where you began. We've seen your first glimpse of bodybuilding with Naba. We've seen big Granty getting up. Where's Grant getting on stage for the first time? Um, we touched into where you came from and obviously how you transitioned from being a uni teacher. No, sorry, not uni teacher. <laughs> working in the hospital yeah. um, to a prep coach. But obviously there's going to be a few guys watching this aspiring with, with a few clients probably wanting to leave their full-time job what was the hardest thing going from you know what martin you clock in at nine you clock out at five because i've messaged you at some ridiculous times and you say you're working so yeah. what is is if, have you seen any hard changes from that routine or has it all worked in a positive manner it's i can probably hand on heart say it's all worked in a positive manner i've done it at probably the hardest time because lockdown pretty much started as i <laughs> quit my job you know um and i was like have I done the right thing right now? But yeah. every single day that I had, every hour in that day, I put everything into it. You know, I made sure that I was doing everything that I can to try and better myself as a coach, whether it be working on better ways that my clients can check in or spending extra time with the client, the, the, the small base cl- Like at that point, I only had tw- between 20 and 30 clients, I think, yeah. when I left my job, you know, and it was just making sure that I was investing myself in these people to make sure that I brought the absolute best out of them. Word of mouth is probably the best. The best, yeah, I would agree. That you can have, you know, it's your um, trip advisor for holidays. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's one of those things that once that starts going, you know, and if you can rely on that, then that's your golden avenue. And then obviously when, when that goes... In, in your area, you were the only coach, I believe. Yeah, like, yeah, there, there's not a great... Yeah, well-established coach. I believe yeah. in your area, it was only you. And I was yeah. very fortunate when I was um, living in Kent. I was the only really established one there in Watford. I'm, yeah. you know, I've got, I've got that sort of foothold again. So again, yeah, word of mouth is your biggest marketing team. And you know, we've worked with mentors and stuff like that, and all credit to them. But yeah. at, the, at the at the end of the day, results is your biggest marketing team. And yeah. so that's it and and you could have any sales pitch you want and no no offense to anybody that's following these the best thing that you can do to sell yourself is clients word of mouth and your results okay you like i'm speaking a little bit more now on camera on social media on on instagram i'm doing a few more reels but as of, as of 12 months ago i probably didn't even talk on no, was, good and it's good we're lucky we can have them combos right and i think yeah. we had a cool couple of weeks i think you could you should do this or i'm not yeah many reels out and just put results and mm. it's social media is also so i would actually want to touch on this how important is social media in your business as an aspiring coach who's getting leads in from germany amsterdam because i know you've got shows how important is it your social media getting martin across uh, it's again it, it's now at a point where because i want to take myself to that level um working with international client my, my international client base has risen crazy like 25 30 percent over the last six months obviously the exposure with the clients that i do have and bringing the results that I, I have with them has helped that you know and again word of mouth and so it all sort of links together and the beauty of social media allows people to connect quite easy you know um having conversation with guys in brazil canada like Japan, I'm trying to break the language barrier. You know, sometimes you're like, "How have I been seen here?" <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Mate. And and it, it it then you take a step back, and I'm like, 
I must actually be doing something all right. Yeah, yeah no, I must because this year, thank, thankfully, obviously, Gunter did very well. Hey, you've had a, mate, you've probably trumped everybody this year, I reckon. Uh, you always say this. <laughs> you know, right, I do appreciate it because you do give me my flowers and it means a lot to me. But you know what I'm like. I just like, yeah. uh, I'm not going to say it. Like, people are like, you don't talk about it enough. I'm like, no, nah, I'm scared. But uh, <laughs> there we go, the imposter syndrome. I had a big um, influx of American females, which are some great ones. And I one turned pro in America as well and a few en route. And even to me, I was like, there's so many people in America. Why me? But credit yeah. to the UK. We are so far ahead in coaching, delivery, service, yeah. loom videos. Yeah. Um, a lot of American coaches say, take your macros and go away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the UK's coaching service trumps exactly. the same. Oh. Easy, mate. And I hear this all the time. I hear guys, it's like horror stories, mate. Like you get an email three weeks after you check it. <laughs> yeah. The coaching in America is typically about three fifty to four hundred dollars as well. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's credit to the the UK industry that everybody you know, and, and again, being in that position where a lot of people can connect with each other, like myself, Tom, and Callum are doing yeah, uh, seminars. You've done seminars with multiple people, you know. We should do something together, bro. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of those things, mate. Like. We're, we're all willing it because we enjoy it and we want to share this journey 100%. to get to where we want to be. Yeah, and even like now with the teams, like I know in your team you're busy, I'm busy, but it's like, why have we got teams? It's not just we want to be busy, we want it, the brand to be busy to help as many people as we can because it's all reflective of the name and we want to, you know, when we stop, stand for something and be like, I helped 2,000 people. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. People see people with teams and like, oh, they're just trying to, to get as much as they can. It's like, no, no, my film of yeah. fulfillment is from getting everyone busy and saying I've impacted him or I've not put him on stage, but my team has put him on stage and, and exactly. stuff like that. And I feel like Pal's yeah. like, you know, doing it great with 10 coaches now. Yeah. Ten, yeah. Like, yeah. And they're phenomenal coaches. Yeah. And I think there's I think there's still a lot of negativity around teams, you know. Yeah. But like like you said, the thing is the reason why I do it and I know the reason why you do it. Is because I can't take on yeah. X amount more clients. You know, I have to have a diversity in regards to. Like, unfortunately, I'm at this level, you know, and I, yeah. I, I don't want to max myself out and then lose the consistency with my clients. So I have other options, you know, uh, and that's what brings me to the condition coach ethos, you know. But again, a lot of the the guys that sort of leading the way are having teams now, and again, it sets the tone from the top, and it's becoming more of a popular thing. So, no, it's nice to speak to the guys with teams and sort of get that insight. So, you know, and I say to guys aspiring, you can't coach the world yourself. You know, I thought it at one point and my service wasn't yeah. what it, it wasn't what it is now. And I, I, I'm i always honest, I learned the hard way. Yes. Like, yeah. I took on a lot, but I lost a lot. And now I've, do you know what I mean? My churn rate's very good and I'm working with the least I've ever worked with. And that's probably reflective in my result. Yeah. Uh, and But look at your life, mate, as well. You know? Yeah, it's quite flexible. And you've got to have that We've been balls deep, mate. We've been in and... You know, it's like today I said to the missus, I said, oh, we'll go to New York. And she was like, yeah, okay. And I was like, but we're going for a show. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's like you, like I've seen you out, you make the work the priority and then everything comes sort of around that as well. 100%, mate. Are you doing New York? Uh, New you? York. Yeah, I think Tunde's doing New York. Tunde's I'll see you there, mate. We're going to be there. Yeah, New York, good. So that's good. I think New York, I've got Dallas in August. Winter's doing Portugal. She had the arms, but she's in Portugal. So, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a few. I know the one. You'll be at the, the same one as me, as it always stands. And that's what it is, mate. Like, we'll, we'll hook up and, and... Yeah, we hook up, get food, you know what I mean? So, guys coming into this industry, one thing I do want to say is don't be that online coach that just hates everyone or doesn't get yeah. on with everyone. Like, I've lost clients to Zach Pro Coach. Martin. I've lost clients to Martin, vice versa. Don't be the guy that... Be an open book, be friendly, be resourceful yeah. to people, and it will come back tenfold, 100%. One thing I've learned in this game is don't things take things personally. It's not you making the decision. You know, if, if you can hand on heart say that you've given everything to that client and they decide to go somewhere else, that's up to them at the end of the day. You know? Yeah, I, I think we had a chat about this this year. Um, and yeah. I saw it not from myself. I saw it from a mate of mine and when he worked with a client and he got very upset and I was like, you know, people only choose one where they put their money and two, how long that coaching and 
client relationship last because you're never going to kick someone off. But if they want to try something new, we have to respect that. And the yeah. reason why is if you leave, I always was taught leave the door open for what was once good business. Yes. Once you fall out, you have closed that door. Yeah. And yeah. I've had clients so like Abby, Abiola, he left me, he went to you on very good yeah. terms. But yeah. I know Abiola has sent two or three guys to me. You know what yeah. I work with, JC. Yeah. He's probably the right fit for you. Do you know what I mean? So it's always about leaving that door open for what was once good business. Mate, we've had conversations and you're like, well, I'm going to send you my, my, my athlete. <laughs> yeah, now you're doing my head in, I'm going to send it to you. But that's the way it is because we always see as, you know, there's enough for everyone. And again, I think, yeah. you know, coaches, I call that coaches don't see it like that. And it's got yeah. a notion. There's so many, so much untouched talent in this oh, world. Much, mate. Yeah. There's so much. I get guys that, oh, I want to compete first season and they're winning old goals. It's like, the benefit of our industry, and it's not just fitness is bigger, bodybuilding is bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, bodybuilding's bigger as well, you know. <laughs> Could we ever live stream when we were competing? No way. Yeah. Uh, you didn't even know who you were competing against. Yeah, you just, yeah. Now you know. Now you know. You know everybody is doing it. Because <laughs> you know the person that they're being coached by or whatever. But, yeah, no, that's hilarious. Because I remember when I was competing, I did NABA as well in 2018. I come third. I remember looking through social media and I saw everyone competing and then I got to the stage and Jim Giorgio turned up. <laughs> I was like 22, I did the open. I come third, fair play. And it's like, he's an old school body, bodybuilder. From that era, you didn't know he was turning up. But as social, as as the bodybuilding scene gets younger, you know who's competing and stuff like that. So it is mad. So I'm going to ask you a question. What is your biggest achievement? And you can't say Lewis Breed because he's a close friend as a coach. As a coach, my biggest achievement. Christ. And don't say the client's name, just say the achievement because I don't want any clients getting upset. <laughs> um, it was another close friend of mine who I actually competed with um, in NABA in 2017. Um, he beat me in the overall. Who was it? Jordan. Gomez? Yeah. Fucker turned up out of, turned out out of the blue. I was like, yeah. the old thing, like, he's gonna be competing today. And then this little fucking dude is it comes out, but fucking hell, Jordan, credit to Jordan, you know, we get on with him, he, he's done absolutely amazing. Yeah, like like he we were friends since that day, since the day that I've met him at that show. We went yeah, on to do that. Pro. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. And and like to be able to show, like I've got so many achievements, but I could list uh, like a hundred of them. That one was a little bit more personal because I knew how much he wanted it. Like we worked together for a season prior to him going for his pro card. He won the overall at the show that we'd done. We went to take a step back. I said, mate, we're going to put everything in from this point, you know, and we're going to get you that pro card. You know, it didn't happen at the first attempt, but it happened at the second attempt. Yeah, Jordan's one of them guys, like watching him at PC, I think Wales or wherever I watched him a couple of years before. Yeah. And he's always like, this guy's got it. And, and, and yeah. in the nicest way, in, in this industry, some people got it and some people haven't. And Jordan's always had it. And I yeah. think he's going to show the world how much he's got it when he gets on the pro stage. I think, and I agree that. And again, being able to... Is he doing Portugal? He's doing New York. Okay, so yeah, around that time. He's doing Dubai. He's doing Portugal. Nice. So you've got such a love for Portugal. I just knew he was doing it. <laughs> yeah um it, it it's it's because new york's gonna be a a, a big one like a massive yeah, massive so if you get your name out you get your name out but and that's what it was like it's, it's one of those, up, yeah it's a risk versus reward and i was having this conversation with uh, with with someone the other day like i think that was lewis um the risk versus reward as a open bodybuilder to try and be no because i said to like i said to jordan realistically like it could go really well or it could go like to the point where because you're a rookie, no one's going to look at you. But I feel like the risk is less in the 2 one two compared to the Open because exactly the, normally the classes are more diluted. Exactly that, mate. And that's what I said to him. And I think that you can make your statement at that show. You don't have to win it, but you, 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 can, you can really make a statement. But he's, mate, he's got every chance in the world that he could do it. You well, know? Like the only 2 one two shows, they're probably... Yeah, the, the the shows where the risk is much less, you know, the open there sometimes there's twenty five guys. I think yeah. in the two one two there's eight. Jordan is good enough to beat eight guys on his day. 100%. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. And then obviously, even if he, he if if 
if he wins it, we're still going to do the shows, you know. Um, if not, then we're just still going to carry on. And the, the thing is, there's a gap between the buyer. Positive side, we all got love for Dean White. Dean White did it. Do you know what I mean? And that sort of says, if some, you know, like in life, I'm like, if someone from the UK did it, there's no reason why I can't do it. Exactly that, mate. Exactly that. And I think I from a personal thing as well, because of the relationship we had prior to us coaching together, it would be great to see that unfold as well and be a part of it. Good. I've got last one of the last questions. How is it coaching your partner? <laughs> <Especially> <laughs> They wanted to coach your partner. Everyone knows I've got a massive love for Amanda. She's like a big sister. I don't. I don't coach her, do I? You used to. <laughs> no, I've, I've never coached her properly. Never. Oh, yeah, all oh, right. But yeah. there's reasons why, and I can answer it in that sense because Amanda is a fantastic bodybuilder. Um, she's got everything there. You know the, what she's like. <laughs> um, she likes her Reese's pieces. <laughs> she likes her Reese's pieces. She likes a snack. Um, Again, with her, I think she'll do amazing things this year. We sort of saw a glimpse of that last year as well. And yeah, I think a glimpse last year. Super proud of, of where she came last year. Yeah, she just had the confidence because I don't think she had... I remember I saw her when we, we all did the prep as an amateur with Jamie. But yeah. I think she's now got the confidence. Yeah, and I think that's there. She's, she's a different person. Like, I've seen a night and day difference from our approach now in this sort of off-season transition into prep that sort of trumped previous previous times by tenfold, you know? Um, and that's only going to relate to the, the end result, you know? Potentially looking at Spain in June, Chicago, you know? So she's still like 20-odd weeks away. We are going to Mexico next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> One big blowout, yeah, that's fine. Um, but she, like, she's already like, oh, I need to do this, do that, you know? And, and that's fine, you know? She, She'll stick to our plan whilst we were there. I won't. <laughs> I'll just enjoy everything. Um, that's, that's, that's good to see. I couldn't coach her, put it that way. And that's why. And I she mean, couldn't. Personally, from a perspective, I do say to guys like, try and listen if you're missus as a, as, a, as a try not to, because again, you don't want to cross that line between relationship and couple. And, you know, yeah. sometimes you have to have half points of harsh conversations and tell clients off. You don't really want to bring that home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no. And the thing is, though, Amanda would never listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> and and the thing is though she she wouldn't uh i don't know it's it's just, it just wouldn't work 100 percent. we would argue you know it wouldn't be worth it's it's like you you know like anyone in another coach it's not worth the stress <laughs> exactly that way. exactly that we all know that she could hit the olympia stage oh 100 i would not to see that on um hopefully this year like this could be her last year um she wants to place in top five um, but I can see her do it better than that, I think. Yeah, and then getting that momentum, that would be pretty cool. So yeah. before we wrap up, what's next for you? Not just you, what's next for the brand? So two questions. Okay, so the I'll go with the brand. The brand, um, obviously we've just taken on Alex. Okay, that's four coaches under the condition coach umbrella. Question, would would he cross over to IFBB? Um, yes. In his own time, he's he's more than happy. And one thing that this, this is a good point to put across, actually, Alex is a fantastic bodybuilder, crazy, crazy potential. Um, the development he's made over the last few years is, is mega. He's a, he's a PCA pro, and that development is just going to continue and replicate every time he goes into an off season, goes back on stage. He knows himself that he could potentially go for a pro card. Yeah, I agree. But he's in the mindset of where am I, where is he going to go with that when he gets it. No, he, that doesn't make sense. So just take your time and get your he, He's enjoying himself competing as an amateur, as a PCA pro, traveling the world, earning good money from it, winning his shows, you know. Um, and, and that, shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's it, mate, and, and that's what I say to a lot of people. Don't rush to get that pro card because once you do, they unless you're at the position where very few are in order. You, you, your season's your, well, your career is over for the next potentially five years for yeah. some people. And yeah. and um, um, so spinning that back around, Alex is back on with us. Uh, is on with us as a coach now. Um, he, I've got a lot of time for Alex. He's very dedicated. He's very focused. He loves what we do as a as a company. Yeah, he's a, always been a big supporter. He's always had your back as well. Which yeah, is really yeah. Nice to see when the athletes really dug in. Yeah, you know, and and that works well. Um, I, and I, I just want to 
I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to take on too many coaches. I don't want to sort of because yeah. at the end of the day, I've got to manage it. And, and, and yeah. Sure. yeah. So I don't want too much stress on myself. But it would be nice to potentially have maybe one or two more by the end of the year, and then be sort of happy at that point. Um, personally, um, we're in conversations with uh, a lot of people in regards to potentially heading over to Dubai. Nice. Um, which is, I, know you, you, I think you've I've been there. I'll be back one day. I'm there next month for a couple of weeks, but yeah. I also think like with where it, it's a testament to where the brand's moving because you'll get athletes that are interested there and, and stuff like that, and it, it's the next yeah. route for you to grow. When's your yeah. seminar in Dubai? So the seminar in Dubai is on the 23rd, I think, 23rd of Feb. I'm going to be in Dubai. So I, I, I want a ticket and I want a free yep. one. <laughs> I'll put that in my diary now. I'll put that in my yeah. diary now. Now I'll buy a ticket. Um, yeah, so that's at the dungeon. We've got a two-day seminar, uh, the Coach Approach Dungeon Edition. Um, well, I've across you've the been to Dungeon, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but yeah, like when you see the quality and calibre of fixed in bodybuilders in Dungeon, it's like, this yeah. really, so that's exciting me now. 23rd of Feb, send me the link after I get a ticket. We'll be there. We'll, like, we're going to probably head over a week earlier as well. So I'm there from the 8th, so sick. But yeah, about that, it's like, it, it's where, where I am with my coaching. I have very, very, very small numbers in my area. We're talking maybe I can count on one hand. Yeah. Um, you, you're always all over the gaff as well. You know, but my, my travel, I, I was meant to do this. I was meant to actually tally up the amount of air miles that I clutched up last year. Um, I won't but, say the figure, but I know how much you spent on travel. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it's not a, it's not about because I love doing that, you know. So why not be in a position where I can base myself there, still have a base? And travel the same amount. If anything, less. Some of your travels were six, seven hours. Yeah, exactly that, mate. So... It, I guess it's just putting ourselves in a better environment to a certain degree, you know. Um, really nothing's going to change in regards to coaching. I'll still be at all the UK shows. Um, it, it takes me four or five hours to get there from Plymouth anyway. I can just fly that in. You'll right. you just do what I did when I was living there. You just put more clients in set shows. And, you know, yeah. as we coach every year, it's like, how can I structure this better? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. when I first started, I got every show each week. Now I'm like, you know what, you free do that show, you free do that show. And it's just about, like, we have to remember it's managing a business as well. Yeah, I, I, I was f f really pointed out to me this season. I, I looked at the first 15 shows that I've got, four in the UK, 11 or uh, Yeah, this abroad. year there's not as many shows in the UK, I feel, which has pushed yeah. people to go abroad. But no, that's yeah. cool. It's been exciting yeah. chatting to you. Yeah, I believe it's Condition Coach or Martin Winston on Insta? Martin Winston. Martin, Martin underscore Winston underscore. And then we've got the condition coaches as well. Yeah, yeah, most of you guys watching this, my, it would mainly be my clients, your clients, anyone on the fence watching. Yeah, yeah. Get in yeah. touch with Martin if you want coaching. Yes, I'm a coach that actively promotes other coaches. <laughs> you know, a great pet coach, great friend. I've worked with Martin. I know the system. I know the process. We both retired from bodybuilding, so I didn't work with him for, for very long. <laughs> um, someone I'll see soon. Um, yes. Up there. I'll drop you a WhatsApp yeah. after this and we'll have a catch up. Yeah, mate. It's been